But it's Biden versus Trump. Uh, yes, we know that. It what, is. Uh, it is. What do, you, what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah, yeah love that. Right? And, yeah, and good. you know, it's kind of like one is old and effective and compassionate, yeah. has a heart, and really cares about people, and one is old and has been charged with 91 felonies. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean... Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't understand why this is even a hard choice, really. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. But we have to go through the election, and hopefully people will realize what's at stake because it's an existential uh, question. I, what kind of country we're going to have, what kind of democracy we're going to have. And people who blow that off are not paying attention because it's not like... Trump, his enablers, his empowerers, his allies are not telling us what they want to do. I mean, they're pretty clear about what kind of country they want. Yeah. Yeah. So. Get out there and vote. Hillary Clinton propaganda machine is out and about in full force. Once again, she's making her rounds to all the woke talk shows. In this case, it's Jimmy Fallon, a weak and woke individual who promotes failing Democrat policies and failing Democrat candidates every chance he gets, similar to Jimmy Kimmel and Colbert. These people, all the elites of Hollywood, support the Democrats because if Donald Trump becomes president again, all these Democrats know that all the alleged crimes they're committing are going to be brought out just like the Democrats are doing to Trump. And you hear Clinton say, yes, they're both two old men, but one has compassion. He's effective. Effective in what, Hillary? Explain what he's effective in, because most of the American people have not seen it for almost four years. And of course, she says Biden cares about people. Biden doesn't know who's standing in front of him minute to minute. He has no idea what's going on around him. We see this more and more and more. That's why he's using the Clinton propaganda machine and the Obama propaganda machine to push him to win another election. Because Biden alone could not do it. We all know this. So it's going to be Trump against Biden. And then, of course, Clinton says, and Trump is old, but also has been charged with 91 felonies for indictments. That's the nonsense that they want people to believe, because most people believe the truth that the Democrats are doing this because they are scared. They are running scared because they had to come up with a way to stop Trump from winning back the White House. So let's dig up all these things. The Stormy Daniels nonsense, the illegal businesses or uh, illegal records where he just paid a $175 million bond to Letitia James, who, by the way, campaigned on I'm going after Trump. We are going to get Donald Trump. Those video clips are all over the internet, but if you ask her that, she will deny it. Okay? This is nothing more than a woke push by the left, and it's only going to heat up the closer we get to November. But then, of course, we have the windbags on the view. Joy Behar, for instance, had something to say about Hillary Clinton's appearance on Jimmy Fallon. Yes. Now, these people who are on the fence, what are you thinking? This is what Hillary's trying to say to people. What are you thinking? There is no choice here. You have a man, Joe Biden is a good person. He understands grief. He's lost a child. He's lost two children. He lost a wife. He, he's compassionate. He feels for Americans. I, this guy, he's a psychopath. Yeah, but I think like so in a roundabout way, what she's doing is bashing American voters. What are you thinking? There is no choice. Joe Biden is a good person. He knows grief. He lost a child. What at all does that have to do with running the country, 
with being an effective president, grief and losing children, millions upon millions of Americans have lost children and have grieved the loss of loved ones. So that right there goes out the window because it has zero to do with the effectiveness of Joe Biden as the president. But these women have nothing else to talk about. They love and adore Hillary Clinton. Most likely they all cried in a circle when Donald Trump beat her in 2016. That's all this is. They know, and I said this before, they know our country's failing. They know we're being invaded by illegals, but they don't care. They know prices are high, people are struggling, but they don't care because they're all millionaires living in an ultra-woke state such as California, and they actually believe Gavin Newsom has transformed California into this wonderful paradise, when we all know that is absolute garbage. Homelessness, record homelessness, drug addiction, record high crime. People are leaving California in droves because they can't afford to live there. But you can't tell the woke Democrats that because then you're the bad person. But the last person I have to speak of is Stephen A. Smith. He is the one of the co-hosts of First Take on ESPN. He's a basketball expert, football expert, which is fine. But why is Stephen A. Smith talking about politics? That's not his shtick. No, he's a sports guy. But I'm going to tell you why he's talking about it after we watch this clip. Stephen, great to have you on set. So what do you make of that? Get over it? I don't think it was a very wise statement on her part. <laughs> How did that work out for her in 2016? I think that's something that we have to recognize. Yes, she won the popular vote, but at the end of the day, she wasn't the president of the United States. It was him. You can look at her not campaigning in Wisconsin in the last days, not campaigning in Pennsylvania in the last days. You can look at some of the stuff that they were saying about her that sort of distracted things from where it should have been in terms of Comey and his report uh, from the FBI. You can bring up a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, the last thing you need to do is to do anything that could agitate a potential voter in this particular but election. What do you make about the actual argument that she's making? I mean, she's basically saying two old people, yes, yes. but they're substantively different. I mean, Absolutely. Well, 91 listen. counts against him. Well, listen. If you're Nobody's yeah. brought that up more than me. Uh, for, yeah. you know, four indictments, 91 counts, impeached twice. I'm not voting for him. I've said that to a lot of people. I've said that to you. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, is that at some point in time, you got to take into account what the voters thinking about. The voters, a lot of them out there, tens of millions of them out there, by the way, don't care what he's going through right now. They don't care about his guilt or innocence, his perceived guilt or innocence. They don't care about the 91 counts. They're thinking about their lives. And a lot of times we see politicians taking the positions that they're taking and while we can respect their candor and their honesty they do seem a bit detached at time from what the voters are actually feeling and what the vote all of a sudden Stephen A. Smith is a political expert he is a great sportscaster I'm not going to take that away from him do I think he makes way too much money to talk about sports absolutely but Stephen A. Smith is telling you straight out he's not voting for Donald Trump he knows that Donald Trump's been in, uh, uh, indicted four times and has 91 felony counts and has been impeached twice. But he also said something with millions of Americans are thinking, which is Stephen Smith is right. Voters are thinking about their own lives. They care about their own lives. They care about survival in one of the toughest economies our country has ever faced. And this is all because of Joe Biden. So no, people don't care that Donald Trump has 91 felony counts or four indictments because the majority of them are crap. You know it, I know it, Stephen Smith knows it, Clinton knows it, and the list goes on. The more they do to Trump, the stronger he comes back and the higher his polls numbers go. So the writing is on the wall. You can bash Trump all you want. But all you're doing is making the American people see that you're just covering up and telling lies 
and pushing propaganda for a failing president, which happens to be Joe Biden. Hillary Clinton to this day is still bitter that she got beat by Trump. She calls millions of Americans election deniers. Don't tell me Hillary Clinton's not an election denier. She absolutely is. But they'll never say anything because, God forbid, you interfere with the Clinton machine. People can complain all they want on the left and say, look what Trump did. Look what Trump did. Trump didn't do anything. What Trump did, in my opinion, is make this country great. You know, MAGA. Everybody's a MAGA extremist which again is crap. People were comfortable. They had money. They had jobs. And the most important two things of the Trump presidency was there was not mass illegal immigration. There were zero wars in other countries that the United States was funding and or participating in. The bottom line here is this. Clinton, Behar, the other one's on The View, Stephen A. Smith on CNN, the list goes on and on. They are going to do all they can do to try to convince the American people that Trump is bad, the orange man is bad, he's offensive. Give me a break. In reality, we all can see that Joe Biden is an absolute failure as a president, and it's my opinion that he's done nothing his entire political career but be racist, want to lock up criminals for drugs that his own son was using, but he'll deny all of it. Joe Biden once said in an interview, same-sex couples should not be allowed to marry. Now he's the biggest gay marriage advocate and transgender advocate there is because he tells fairy tales for votes. That is all. That's all we see, and we're going to continue to see it right up until November. But Stephen A. thinks he's going to get through to the black voter that Biden is the man for the job. But we've seen blacks, Latinos, they're against Biden. They're tired of suffering and they're tired of struggling under his failed leadership. And now it's time to change and November is the time. People need to vote Joe Biden and Kamala Harris out. Bottom line, end of story. Again, I was never a Trump fan, huge Trump supporter, but it's going to be Biden or Trump. And I certainly would never waste a vote on Joe Biden. You, you can do whatever you want, but the writing is on the wall. It's in black and white. Trump will save us from this destruction that Biden's putting us through. And Biden will continue the destruction until he either is too ill to continue or he does another four years. And then we'll be so deep into the hole, we'll never be able to come out of it. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Share this video. I appreciate all you viewers. I hope everyone's healthy and safe. Have a great day.